Verna Fields for Jules. In her late 30s, Verna Fields got her start in the industry as a sound editor. As Fields worked her way into film editing in the 1960s, she earned a positive reputation and the nickname Mother Cutter. We all refer to Verna Fields as Mother Cutter uh, because she was very earthy and very maternal. She cut her films at her house, in her pool house, in the San Fernando Valley, and it was a very Hamisha kind of a work place. Fields' style can be best described as fearless. She had a less-is-more approach to editing that gave her films direction and allowed for audiences to be active participants in the story's development. Instead of simply evoking empathy from her audiences, she made them feel swept up in and a part of the on-screen emotions. <laughs> Fields was also great at conveying complex emotions with well-timed reaction shots. Often, editors hold on an actor's performance to reveal a character's emotional story. While having a moment like this with a character can be beneficial, it can easily feel disingenuous. Fields didn't allow for this potential misrepresentation of emotion, and her technique made her attractive to directors. Fields was also known for her unconventional choice to work on set during production. This improved her understanding of her collaborators and their creative visions. By the 1970s, she had a positive relationship with three notable directors, Peter Bogdanovich, George Lucas, and Steven Spielberg. In 1972, George Lucas was working his way through his second feature film, American Graffiti, with his then-wife, Marsha Lucas, as the film's editor. While American Graffiti was and continues to be praised for its character-driven story and iconic soundtrack, the film's production faced struggle after struggle. For support on the film, the Lucases reached out to friends Steven Spielberg and Verna Fields. Following the successful collaboration, Spielberg recruited Fields to work with him on his upcoming projects in both editing and producing. This, of course, included Spielberg's 1975 film, Jaws. Like American Graffiti, the production of Jaws was hardly smooth sailing. Spielberg, concerned for the future of his career, faced conflict on set, budgetary issues, and three unconvincing mechanical sharks. Fortunately, Fields sought out solutions in the editing process that ultimately saved the film and made it the blockbuster it is. Fields and Spielberg quickly discovered that all suspense was lost as soon as the faux shark was directly revealed on screen. To solve this, Fields cleverly cut out the footage and instead built tension by editing around the shark. She used POV shots and quickened the pacing to make audiences afraid of a villain that was simultaneously unknown and inescapable. Verna Field's successful cut of Jaws landed her an AEC Eddie Award and the Best Editing Academy Award in 1976. In fact, the buzz surrounding the editing of Jaws was so unprecedented that Fields actually got to participate in the film's promotional tour alongside Spielberg. Following Jaws, Universal Studios offered Fields a position as vice president of feature production. She took the job and, subsequently, Jaws would be the last film that Fields would edit. Now, let's rewind back to 1964, when Verna Fields was celebrating a successful award season with American Graffiti co-editor Marsha Lucas. During this time, Marsha Lucas was editing Martin Scorsese's first studio feature film, Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore. Lucas recalls that she took the job to gain editing experience outside of her husband's projects. Up until this point, Lucas had been working in the industry first as a film librarian and then as an assistant editor. In 1964, Marsha was hired by Verna Fields to work on a government-funded documentary as her assistant editor. Fields also hired graduate students from USC. Marsha was assigned to work closely with one of the students, George Lucas. From then on, their relationship, both romantic and professional, grew. Marsha was George's assistant editor on his first feature film. And while the film was a miss, the Lucases had a fairly strong place in the industry that provided Marsha assistant editing opportunities with directors like Francis Ford Coppola and Michael Ritchie. When it was time for George to embark on his next feature, American Graffiti, it was Marsha who told him that emotion was the key to audience engagement. Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore was a success during the 1975 awards season, but Marsha Lucas's attention would soon be pulled back to her husband as George Lucas was in the process of developing a film that would come to define New Hollywood. 
The story of how Marsh Lucas saved Star Wars A New Hope in the edit has become a major point of discussion both within the Star Wars fandom and beyond it. This is in part due to the popularity of the 2017 Rocket Jump video essay, How Star Wars Was Saved in the Edit. Many people appreciated how the video highlighted Marsh Lucas' impact on the film franchise. However, some Star Wars fans speak out against the sentiment that Marsh Lucas saved the film, as they believe it takes away from George Lucas' genius. Either way, there is undeniable evidence that Marsh Lucas had a critical role in shaping and improving the franchise. Even before the editing process of A New Hope, Marsha Lucas had opinions and suggestions that made the story better. Marsha invented the concept of Force Ghosts. She suggested that Obi-Wan should be Luke's spirit guide, and even that he should be killed by Darth Vader. In the edit, Marsha made countless choices to help the film's emotional journey flow by employing techniques like cross-cutting and reordering scenes. Before her changes, there was no heart to the film. Without having to add scenes or do reshoots, Marsha was able to compose and essentially rewrite the story of Star Wars A New Hope to have emotional purpose and a cohesive character development. In 1977, after the film's release, Marsh Lucas would go on to win the only Academy Award that either Lucas have ever received for the editing of A New Hope. The remarkable careers of Verna Fields and Marsha Lucas prove the value of editors as emotional storytellers. These women were working in film at a time when certain creative freedoms were still brand new to the industry. New Hollywood filmmakers were striving to make something new and exciting for audiences, and it is no surprise that these women were behind some of the most influential films of the movement.